Okay, Knemon, let's start. Are you ready? Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. It's entitled Fishing from an Ocean of Data. And the idea is to foster the development of a knowledgeable and ocean-friendly society. Uh, my name is Tymon Zieliński. Uh, I'm from the Institute of Oceanology. And uh, we are uh, organizing this webinar together with uh, these companies that you can see the logos beyond, below. It's IODE, Storwar, and Związek Miast i Gmin Morskich. Uh, my colleagues, the panelists, will introduce themselves and, and uh, their in institutions in a moment. Can I have a next slide, please? We'd like to start with some housekeeping rules. Uh, make sure your name is clearly entered so when you ask questions, you, we know who you are. Uh, your microphones and videos will be automatically set off. Questions during uh, panel discussion, we, we really welcome the questions, but please use the chat option. Uh, make a very, a very specific and short comment, or if you have questions, uh, please make them also short. Uh, this panel is available live on the Zoom platform, as, as we know now, uh, but also through Facebook and the YouTube. And while it is being recorded, uh, it will be available on YouTube and Facebook later on. Can I have another one, please? Um, this is the panel team. Uh, once again, I'm Tymon Zieliński. We have uh, Marcin Wichorowski from um, Institute of Ocean Knowledge, Polish, Polish Academy of Sciences. We have Taco de Bruin from IODE. We also have Marta Galas with us from, uh, from uh, Związek Miast i Gmin Nadmorskich and Paweł Mączka from Storware. Why do we want this panel to be part of the uh, European Maritime Day? Because uh, this is uh, one of the events that uh, are part of this uh, year's uh, celebrations. Uh, in, in 2021, on, on January 1st, we started the uh, UN Ocean uh, Decade, the Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. And uh, in, this, in this theme, we have two very important issues involved. The first one is the, the ocean science. 70% uh, of our planet is covered by ocean and the ocean is very much under, um, under um, uh, checked by us. And we, we don't really know much about it, even though we've been using it for, for thousands of years now. And part uh, of this theme is the sustainable development, the, the, the philosophy that we all have, we, I hope we all share, is um, uh, that potentially, we hope so, that, that in let's say 30, 50 years, uh, the planet will be more or less in the same condition as it is now, or maybe not such a bad condition, uh, but it's all, it, it all depends on us. And since ocean is such a vital part of the, of the uh, reality, uh, of our re reality, we've, we believe that this panel will, will uh, raise some issues that are important for all of us in terms of sustainable development, in terms of, of collecting data and for the ocean, and in, in terms of understanding the processes that ocean uh, that uh, that uh, happen in the ocean and that are vital for our future. Uh, I would like to switch now to our panelists and we will start with Marcin Wichorowski who will shortly introduce himself and that's the oceanology. Marcin, the floor is yours, please. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. It depends on time zone of our spectators. Uh, I'm Marcin Michorowski from Institute of Oceanology, uh, Polish Academy of Sciences. Uh, Institute is part of the corporation, scientific corporation in Poland. Uh, it, Institute is located in beautiful place on the northern, uh, uh, in the northern part of Poland on the, on the coast of Baltic uh, Sea. Uh, the history of Institute is uh, over mm -hmm. uh, 60, uh, 60 years. Uh, and our mission is to conduct comprehensive studies of the marine environment and the issues uh, related to this, to protection of this environment and sustainable use. Uh, it 
conforms chiefly to goals uh, 13 and 14 of United Nations Sustainable Development, so climate action and life underwater. Uh, our research is uh, con conducted mostly in Baltic Sea, but uh, during summertime uh, we have uh, over 35 years history uh, of research in Arctic seas. Uh, our basic platform, research platform, is uh, a vessel, a research vessel Oceania. It's a very interesting vessel and is used for hydrographic, optical, acoustic, chemical, biological, atmospheric studies in remote uh, areas and spent more than 200 sailing days uh, on the sea. Next, please. Yes, we have yes. now Taco, Taco de Bruin. Could you please shortly introduce yourself and, uh, and the institution? Thank you very much, uh, Timon. Indeed, my name is Taco de Bruin. I'm uh, co-chair of the uh, International Oceanographic Data and Information Exchange Committee, which is a committee or a program of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. And its mission, IOD's mission, is to enhance marine research exploitation development by facilitating the exchange of oceanographic data and information and by meeting the needs of users, that's especially important, the needs of users for data and information products. IUDE is a global network of some 67 national oceanographic data centers. And when I made the slide, 30 associate data units, and I can announce that today one was added, the International Seabed Authority. So we now have 31 associate data units and six associate information units and information units are usually um, libraries from oceanetic, oceanographic institutes. Um, IOD was established in 1961, has a project office in Oostende in Belgium. And if you follow that link, you can read more about IOD. Next slide, please. Um, the objectives are to um, facilitate and promote ocean data and information discovery, access and exchange, encourage long-term management of marine data and products and information, uh, develop best practices for all aspects of ocean data management and exchange, assist in uh, capacity building and support international scientific and operational marine programs. Some highlights of IOD projects and programs are for data, and these are just two of the uh, series of data projects and programs. Um, the two that I want to mention are the Ocean Biodiversity Information System, OBIS, and the World Ocean Database. The latter is in collaboration with NCI, the National Oceanographic Data Center for uh, the United States. Um, we maintain a, a list of a database of experts in oceanography and oceanographic data management called Ocean Expert. Uh, something similar for publication together with IM Slick. We have the Aquadox. Um, uh, database. Uh, the Ocean Best Practices, that's a joint project with Goose, and our e-learning environment for capacity building is called Ocean Teacher Global Academy, which is an ISO certified network of global and regional training centers. Next and final slide, please. Currently, and it's not just in oceanographic data management, but in data management in general, um, the word FAIR is the buzzword, and FAIR stands for data should be findable, should be accessible, should be interoperable and reusable. And especially the interoperability is key. Data should be available and usable across disciplines uh, to the benefit of all. And as you may, you may remember from the previous slide that IUDE, uh, with its objectives of having data discoverable and accessible and uh, emphasis on the exchange of data has been working on fair data management since, in, since its inception of, uh, since the establishment of the uh, uh, IOD in 1961. Now, two key current processes, uh, projects for, um, to, to, to uh, um, get to this fair data management um, are the ocean data information system and the ocean best practices system. The ODIS project, the Ocean Data and Information System, 
um, uh, intends to build a digital ecosystem of interoperable and interconnected nodes to find access and reuse data, data products and information across disciplines. It's part of the Ocean Info Hub project, which um, um, has, its, has its aim, uh, a kind of capacity building um, and the first step to um, uh, implement an ODIS is the ODIS CAT project, a catalog of ocean related sources of data and information products and services. This is all in a way part of the ocean uh, decade. Um, Timon already mentioned it, the UN Ocean Dec Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, the key development for the next um, uh, 10 years. And finally, I want to um, uh, emphasize that the Ocean Best Practices is a repository of um, all the um, uh, best practices and methods uh, for uh, oceanography. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we ask Storwer and Pavel? Yeah, hello everybody. So my name is Pavel Monchka. Let's start with the store. So the store uh, is a backup and recovery vendor, Polish one. We work in worldwide and our goal is to keep the data in a good shape. So our goal is to protect data in case of any data losses. Um, so this is, this is a mission where we care about every kilobytes of the data, which is important from the all kinds of the businesses. Okay, let's move forward. Mm, right now, we are actively working with the uh, IOPAN, so Oceanal of Polish Academy of Science. Uh, we're closely working with the Timon team. Ooh, actually, mm, IOPAN is using our platform, uh, our software called vProtect to protect one of the key uh, hypervisors, which is working on a ship. So right now, we closely protect 200 virtual machines uh, with our backup monster mascot, as you see. So he's on the ship and our partnership is all about to help um, uh, IOPAN to, to get their data uh, full, fully protected. We do also advise and helping um, the institution to be much more visible on a different kind of the social media. Lately, we have a discussion with Timon on my live Friday dose. And in the plans, there is a bunch of the different article and the social media presence to help him better understanding um, what the Institute of Oceanography of the Polish Academy of Science is doing. So lots of education, lots, lots of CSR activities uh, for the both sides. Hmm? Uh, myself, so my role is to be a VP and CTO. I'm one of the founders of the store. Uh, we are last seven years, and in the last 13, 15 years, I'm always doing uh, a technical job. Uh, so always taking part of, you know, keep everything what's going on in the IT from the data perspective. Uh, so I hopefully my experience to see the data from the business perspective uh, will give some advantage uh, to this discussion. So I'm involved in many IT projects, uh, but also I do love uh, playing on my guitar, skiing, and having fun with lots of my, of my, of my friends. And I'm still happy, happy father of the two uh, lovely children. Thank you very much. Nothing about football. You're also involved in football. N not as my mm, uh, co-founder, Jan Sobieszczański. Oh, okay. I'm mm -hmm. much more closely to, 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 the, uh, to the NBA part. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you very much. And then Marta czarnecka galas from the Association of Cities and Municipalities. Marta, the floor is yours. Um, yes, hello, uh, good afternoon to everybody. It's also a pleasure for me to represent the Association of Sea Cities and Municipalities uh, based in Gdańsk. Uh, I'm actually the project coordinator of three projects, international projects realized by the association. Um, maybe I can ask for change of slides, please. But uh, first, I will just start uh, with the brief information about the association itself. Um, it is the cooperation of local municipalities established in um, 1991. Uh, 
At the moment, uh, it is 25 local governments from all over the Polish coast, from Elbląg and Krynica Morska to Szczecin. And um, uh, the mission of the association is to connect the municipalities for joint uh, actions and initiatives that would favor the development even of the small uh, municipalities uh, without uh, such big uh, development potential as the, the bigger entities. So the solidarity as a, is one of the principles that the association is based on. Um, it is also to foster the, the, the development of Polish maritime economy and boost growth of coastal municipalities. Uh, especially after Poland's accession to the European Union. Uh, the association aims to aid the small municipalities to get the European Union funding, but also uh, its expertise on how to develop international projects, uh, do some matchmatching with potential partners from other um, coastal municipalities abroad. And maybe the next slide, please. Um, here are the three projects that we are currently realizing. Um, uh, two of them are funded from Interreg Baltic Sea Region Program. This is the Sea Money Baltic Blue Marina, concentrated on sustainable tourism and developing marinas around the Baltic Sea as a sustainable tourist destination. Uh, another one is the Land Sea Act connected with maritime special planning, focused on especially on interaction between uh, land and sea areas. And the project that we have just concluded, but uh, was uh, our flagship, let's say, project uh, that lasted for more than 10 years because it has uh, the, the project before that started the one that we now uh, concluded, South Coast Baltic. It's a marketing initiative promoting the, the marinas on the especially Polish part of the Baltic Sea coast uh, to foreign tourists and uh, help them to, to reach with the offers uh, international tourists, especially from Germany and Scandinavia. So, so this is, I guess, briefly from association. Thank you very much, Marta. So as you can see, we have a diversity of institutions and uh, there is this one common uh, denominator for all of us. We, we work with data and many of us, including now Storer by cooperating with IOPAN, we work um, in the marine environment this way or another. Uh, we decided to, to have four trigger questions for discussion uh, during our panel. And Paulina, could you please set the first trigger question for the discussion? And we'll go into this uh, more interactive uh, part of the uh, meeting. So the first question to discuss is, are data products and knowledge the same? If not, how to turn data and data products into knowledge? Uh, who would like to start? Taco, maybe you. Thank you, uh, Timon. Um, I would say that the short answer is no, not the same. There is this well-known yeah, uh, image of a pyramid with four different layers and the uh, lower layer, the basis is um, the data. And on top of that data layer, there is information or perhaps data products. Uh, on top of that layer is then knowledge. And the top of the pyramid is uh, wisdom. And that's, of course, what we, what we like to, uh, to achieve, that we gain wisdom. Um, but um, I'm, I may be biased. I'm very glad that in this pyramid, as a data manager, that in this pyramid, um, the data form basis for all the others. But I think that's that's of course true. It's it's built on data that we that we can um, um, uh, get information out of. In this case, the ocean, the system ocean. Um, that we get information and we can build, make data products with that data. 
to turn that into knowledge, we need expertise of uh, domain experts. And these domain experts, often scientists, not necessarily scientists, but often scientists have to use the data to um, uh, turn the, the, the data and to uh, have the data products into knowledge. Then knowledge should be used uh, in advising, um, for instance, governments or government agencies um, uh, in whatever policy things that they, they need advice for. So again, the short answer is no. Uh, well, that's also my final answer. I would say that they are certainly not the same, um, but they, they, they are dependent from each other and it all starts with data. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Martin and, uh, and the Institute, uh, we, we, we do all things in the, in the pyramid as, as Taco uh, said that we collect data and at the end we produce knowledge potentially, hopefully, wisdom. Would you, would you comment on that? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I totally agree with uh, Taco. Uh, so data is not uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, we have uh, information, by the way, and uh, all uh, we need at the end of the process is to be missed, to get wisdom. But they, uh, by nature, is just a bunch of, of uh, numbers. Uh, it's an effect of analysis. But uh, of course, we need uh, well-formed, trustworthy data collections because uh, if we want to build something on this base, uh, we have to to to, to uh, provide uh, good data and data uh, products. But uh, information uh, comes from data uh, when we uh, make some uh, insights uh, to data, when we will try to find connections between different uh, data objects. Uh, data can be very heterogeneous. So data comes from very different sources. And uh, mostly in uh, our days, uh, Knowledge comes when we connect uh, data uh, from coming from different uh, domains, and then we will find some correlations, maybe uh, some uh, such uh, constructed data. And uh, I put the definition of David and Proust, uh, what the knowledge is, the knowledge values, information, of new experience. So when we proceed with data through information to knowledge, then we have base to uh, refine uh, data collection processes to find uh, new information to, to, to to extract new information from this uh, data and to build uh, new knowledge. So this is a, we can say, a circle of life <laughs> of uh, data, collecting data, finding information, building knowledge. Then we are sure what we uh, lack uh, with the knowledge and what data we have to, to, to collect and uh, what information we are looking for and how to build new knowledge on, on this basis. Okay, thank you very much. Marta, a, a sort of a provocative question. In your daily life, work, in, in your daily work, do you prefer to obtain data or knowledge from, from an institution such as uh, IOPAN, for example? You have to unmute yourself. Yes, uh, um, you know, in my um, daily work, which is um, working for different um, public authorities, because it's uh, one is this association, another is also the regional authority of Pomorskie, uh, it's for us for sure much easier to obtain knowledge. So we generally try to get the ready product. And uh, I think that the level of um, of uh, knowledge of the employees generally uh, is, thought, is, is not sufficient enough to be able to use data itself 
uh, and also it's the variety of topics that you have to deal on the daily basis. So, uh, so the time needed um, to uh, dedicate uh, to study certain topic uh, would be um, it, it's for sure much efficient to obtain the ready product, let's say the ready expertise. So much more we are focused on getting knowledge and this related product than, than the data, data and information itself. Uh, so this saves a lot of time and also uh, helps to work on different uh, topics at once. And even in, in association of cities and municipalities, which is really focused on blue growth and maritime economy, uh, the, the range of, of, um, of uh, themes interesting for the local municipality is still wide enough. Um, uh, it's, uh, I would say, would be, um, would be very difficult uh, for the, especially um, clerks or administrating from these local municipalities uh, to dig to the data. And, and for sure, it's mainly our practice that we order the ready expertise on the topic and we then promote it. We, we, we get to know about this. We try to discuss the, what, what the expert already advised us and then we promote the certain sense. Okay, thank you very much. So as it was stated, uh, Paro, that a question to you, as it was stated, uh, there is no good knowledge without good data. And how, how do you, make sure that the data is of proper quality, uh, it's properly managed, proper, properly stored and properly used because I understand that that's within your um, the field of expertise and your company is dealing with such issues. You have to unmute if you wanna say something about that. Still muted. Oh, yeah, right. right now I can speak, okay, thank right. you. Yeah, I have some numbers, uh, interesting numbers, because you already, you already told that we have a different layers. So let's start, you know, how many data we'll have worldwide till 2021, Timon, what do you think? Uh, and, environmental data or general? The, the general, the whole data worldwide. I, I have a feeling zettabytes, so just I have a feeling that my brain has not not room for that many zeros, right? Yes, yeah, so one one seventy zettabytes, uh, and it will double or even triple the size of the data that we are collecting right in these days. So it's still growing rapidly. I remember when I started, you know, working with the data and with them. Um, Action, we always hear that there is a wave of the new data information of the of the data and the information. And what the taco said, we need to uh, we need to understand that the data is not the information. And the goal for the platforms, software, and the development parts so of all of the te technology parts is to better is to is the way how to properly collect it, but also how to properly understand it. and keeping none of the software or none of the technology, technology will help us to understand and get that's, the data into the information, but still we need to be aware that um, we need to learn this part of the software to, 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 to get the proper representation. Uh, Bartosz, we are hearing you. Right. Not, not anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, so first of all, you, you know, the software part is to how to get a knowledge, how to get the information from the data. And you, we need to always keep in mind that um, the people building the algorithms, the people building the software. So it's the, it's the key part, how to properly understand. From my perspective, what is more challenging today from the scientific point of view that we have a, lots of bunch of the different data, even the information, but we need to learn properly how to spread and how to build the knowledge in a society and how to speak uh, in, a, in a proper language, in a proper uh, knowledge. So uh, we, I think we, we do not have a problem with with the storing data, with protecting this kind of the data, even if going into these zettabytes, 
uh, numbers, but how to properly uh, transform this data into the information, into the knowledge, and like Taco said, even to the wisdom. I think the key point right now is to get the proper knowledge to the wider audience because none, everybody has the, has the way how to speak properly. Even right now, when I said uh, I'm sorry, 175 I'll, zettabyte of data, mm -hmm, go on. Uh, I'll interrupt you here because we'll get to this point. Okay. The communication. Okay. So if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'll no stop worries. here. And Paulina, can we have the next question, please? Uh, because I, I think the issues that you that you mentioned here, so how to use the data, is the, how is FAIR implemented in the value chain? And the FAIR stands for findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability. What, what a combination of words. Uh, and since Taco used it in his presentation, could you please be the first one again to, to say something in this line, please. Yes, no problem, no problem. I like that. Because um, the the acronym FAIR, and that's a beautiful acronym, of course, because who doesn't want his or her data FAIR? Um, the acronym FAIR was introduced in a paper by Wilkerson at all. But the idea behind FAIR, that data should be findable, should be discoverable, and should be accessible, and the people should reuse data in the future. Um, those ideas are, of course, much, much older and, and stem from the, well, from the, from the early uh, times of, of data management in the, in the 1980s or 1990s or so. Um, it's also important to understand that fair, um, that if one's data are fair, um, it, it's a kind of it's development. Even the definitions of fair, what what is fair, what is exactly does findable and accessible and uh, interoperable mean? Uh, those are not fixed, and not not even you know, not fixed yet, but probably also not in the future. Um, we may never have its final definition of what is fair, but it's 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 much more of a of a of a movement of an, an, an a development. Um, what is very clear um, is that uh, if you want your data to be fair, the data should be available and readable and in understandable, not only to humans, but also to machines. The machine to machine interaction um, is, is, is very important. And it also relates to what Pavel just said about the, the enormous growth of data uh, as human beings, how smart we are, we cannot deal with these large data sets. Um, uh, we need to have machines and the machines need to be able to find the data and to use the data and to interpret the data, and understand the data. Um, so that's why the machine to machine interaction um, is very important for FAIR. Another aspect of FAIR is that um, we should not reinvent the wheel. We should make use of developments, international developments. And there are many, many uh, international um, developments um, going on in uh, often in other um, uh, disciplines, though not specifically uh, uh, oceanography, uh, but we should make use of these developments in other disciplines. Um, I already emphasized that interoperability is the key element here, because what you in the end, what you really want is that data should be used first for the purpose that they have been collected for, say, a scientific um, uh, experiment and to test a scientific hypothesis by a scientific institute. But then the same data are still valuable and can be used in many other applications and many other uh, uses. Um, and, um, but to allow other especially non-specialists to use the data in another discipline, the need, data need to be interoperable so that it is easy for other non-specialists to understand what has been measured, what has been done with the data, uh, versioning of the data, etc. cetera. Um, and then we see an, 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 an development in, especially in, oceanograph in oceanographic data or marine data. Um, and that is that, First, when the internet came up, we, we made these many, many data portals. Every 
institute, every every even every scientist sometimes had her or his own data portal uh, allowing uh, access to the data. But then it becomes very very difficult to um, to uh, get to the uh, to all these data port and find the data. So you need some centralization in a way. The first step that we we as a community data community did was to get these um, these uh, data portals and to to uh, make a one point access to a whole series and a whole whole. Uh, 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 yeah, a whole series of data portals. So you go to one data portal and then get access to data, which is maybe in that data portal, but also to other data portals. Now, the current um, the current uh, approach to that is changing into um, a data ecosystem, a data ecosystem in which every contributor of data is a node in the uh, data ecosystem, and you can access each one of these nodes of these data portals, um, each one of these nodes to access, to find and access the data in all the other nodes of that ecosystem. And that's the kind of uh, holy grail of uh, data management that you get actually in any um, um, uh, point in such a data ecosystem and get access to all the data and in the end, all the information, which is in the entire ecosystem. Okay, thank you very much, Taco. That was a very comprehensive discussion. Uh, but Marta, I, I would like to ask you one question. Uh, one of the points of FAIR is findability. Is it easy for you? How, how do you feel as a person who I understand looks for knowledge or sometimes data? Uh, is it uh, easily, uh, easy for you to find data? Is it easy for you to, to talk to people who have data? How, how is it from your perspective? So uh, unfortunately, I think that the level of awareness of uh, different uh, data available um, or availability of data is very low among uh, um, association or uh, general institutions which, which I represent, let's say. And uh, there is still much to be done to, to raise this awareness. Um, I think it's very, that they, we, are, we are used to certain type of data sets that, it's, um, that we have been um, taught about. And usually we have this tendency not to expand this knowledge. So they stick to the certain databases we used to work with and we don't, um, go into um, the new ones. So sometimes it's even, um, uh, I think very, uh, even if, if you work in a, in a concrete area mm -hmm. like uh, blue economy, for example, um, and, and this is the case of our members, of members of the association of the mm -hmm. uh, cities and municipalities. Uh, I would assess that if you ask uh, the people employed in this local municipality who mm -hmm. and uh, look for such data or which kind of data sets uh, you use for your daily work or for analyzing and, and when you prepare some kind of um, or formulate opinions or policies mm -hmm. local even on the local level uh, on related topics with uh, maritime economy this would be very uh, low percentage so, so this is the basic thing to, to raise this awareness and to increase knowledge about the data sets available. And as I said, it is usually, um, uh, it is usually that, um, that uh, this end users, let's say, to cooperate with certain institutions or universities or, um, or think tanks. And uh, they ask for a ready product a ready report, a ready analysis that they could uh, distribute. And maybe mm -hmm. uh, some um, a, a positive uh, development mm -hmm. in recent years that, um, mm -hmm. that I think is the participation in the, in the project across sectors. 
So uh, many public institutions now uh, start these partnerships or, or they are in partnerships due to realization of various projects, also international like we, uh, we from association participate. And these projects uh, make, uh, makes it uh, for, for this, uh, let's say, very traditionally looking um, public administrator employees to look differently in data and on, on where they can uh, obtain the data, who they can participate, and then this, that, that this cooperation can be very vivid and very tailor-made. So that you can really ask and realize certain topics together and that you can, can combine this expertise. And this is very valuable because sometimes we think that we don't, that we are not experts, but it seems that uh, experience in, in uh, on or, or practical knowledge is also very valuable. So such reports are uh, much better when you combine these different institutions working together on it. And, uh, and then I see is a very positive development. Uh, we, for example, in association already mm, from, from this end user became being the data collector, uh, thanks to participation in the project, uh, connected with specific needs. For example, this development of, uh, of marinas. And it appeared that, we, that there are certain needs for policy recommendations, which are not met at the moment. So there is the need of data collection. And it's not only that we can outsource, but we can also start the process thanks to our, uh, our network of contacts to the uh, local, uh, local municipalities, marine operators, and so on. So, uh, so first of all, this uh, cooperation changes a lot in, the, uh, in uh, looking for data, but also obtaining knowledge and generating knowledge and this co-creation, actually. And I think this is a very important process that should be enhanced and promoted um, because if we, if we stay in the role of the, uh, of the just, you know, contractor of a certain report, uh, that it will be, you know, a one, one ready product um, available when, when it, the process is finished and there mm -hmm. will be no, I, I guess, very huge increase of knowledge at the end. So, uh, so I, I see some very positive things, and and I guess we in this cooperation, this is this way and this changing of roles in the value chain also. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the co-creation and also the citizen science are very important parts of the sustainable development philosophy. So I fully agree. But gentlemen, Martin and Pavel. Uh, how do you feel about it that uh, the, the end user becomes a data collector as well? Uh, how do you feel about it? This, you know, this is a brilliant because it's, if we're talking, if we see the past, it's every year it's easier to, uh, to grab and to have accessibility to the data even if we have to do still do lots of things to um, in a fair operation so be much more findable accessible interoperable and re reusable i think we are going into the, the, the right direction uh, from my perspective as i'm you know see the market and all of the growth from the data the the, the find how to properly find is the is the key part because uh, we are living in a technology when the different sets of data are more and more open, like you know, object storage, storing in a cloud. So the technology is with us here and it definitely will help us to easier get the data. But I'm coming back to the, um, my, my sentence before that, the findable and the way how the, uh, how the scientists should um, promote and help the other institution or even the end user access the data uh, is, is also a, a key point that I would like to emphasize here. Because like I said, we are living in the world. Um, uh, world is the ocean of the data. So we need to help everybody to have a key, proper keys to the specific doors. But I'm, I'm really optimistic here what's going on. 
Okay, thank you very much. And Martin, can I ha can I have your short comment, please? Yes, very, very short. Uh, just to imagine, uh, because it's hard to add a bit uh, to, to, to the previous answers. Uh, uh, imagine ocean uh, is the biggest uh, object in our small world because it's 70% uh, uh, more or less uh, of the uh, globe. Uh, and uh, the extent of this object uh, uh, need uh, to be uh, explored. Uh, uh, by uh, common effort, because no one, no one scientist, no one organization, even no one nation is able to, to uh, do research uh, just uh, ourselves and need cooperation. And this cooperation uh, have some uh, force, some, some uh, other uh, uh, issues like interoperability. Uh, because this interoperability means that different uh, scientists, different organizations and different uh, nations are able to exchange uh, data, exchange knowledge, and then uh, they are at least able to, to build uh, knowledge uh, on the ocean. But still, we know less than 10% of the ocean is, is less than we know about moon, about Mars, and about uh, some space, uh, other space objects. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir, I'm, I'm very optimistic with the, the ocean decade as well, because at least in, in principle, it puts us on, on completely different level of, of cooperation, and, and let's hope it's, it's going to be a successful cooperation. And in many different uh, layers and many different aspects. Okay, Paulina, can we have the third question then? Thank you very much. Uh, we are talking about zillions of, of uh, data. So what are the roles of artificial intelligence and machine learning in the chain value chain? Pavel, could you please start with commenting on that? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Timon. So <clears throat> we don't have a choice. The, what's the role here? This is my, of course, personal opinion, because without the algorithm, without the machine learning and AI behind the scenes, we will not be able to um, understand and uh, analyze all of, all of this data. So we will see right now and in the future Mm, that this role will be more significant for all, all, all of our ocean of, of data. And I'm, and I'm one of those who are saying that it's not the, uh, it's not, it's not the challenge for, for the people itself, people uh, and the, the persons who, who are you know, still managing the algorithm uh, and understanding what's going on behind the scenes will be the key uh, the key persons and the key value to understanding and putting this data into the in, into the information knowledge and wisdom. Uh, but it's we've seen the huge massive of of the new AI uh, and machine learning um, platforms. We've seen how these um, workloads are going into the cloud. Uh, so we've seen more. Um, more advanced technologies provided by the biggest uh, biggest companies such as AWS, so Amazon, IBM, Oracle, Microsoft, and the others. Um, so I think um, the key role is to do not afraid this technology, this algorithm, use it, but of course um, in a proper way with some, um, um, let's say, people as advisors and as supervisors here. Okay, so not use it like in many Marvel films, right? Yeah, not 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 <laughs> not this not you know, against I'm, humanity. Yeah, I'm really reading a lot up about it. We need to, let's say, keep an eye on it. It could go into the bad direction, but I'm here with the optimistic. It's it's important uh, for the modern world to to use this kind of the algorithm, machine learning, and AI. AI or invest in superheroes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Martin, do, do, we, do we see any aspects of AI in, in our daily activities or not yet? Yes, of course. Uh, what can I can say? Uh, 
Artificial inter intelligence is a very general concept. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that in the future we will cohabit uh, or incorporate uh, artificial intelligence to our daily routines and, and uh, every activity. Uh, but regarding the processing of data and acquisition of data uh, and uh, industry 4.0 revolution, we are just facing, uh, uh, we have more and more uh, data uh, streams, data sources, uh, zettabytes of, of data, and processing of this data is behind the possibilities of human brain. So we have to, to, to engage uh, machine learning algorithms to, to analyze this data, to find, uh, to, to, to conduct new paradigm of scientific research. So intensive data science, inter intensive data exploration, uh, just to, to uh, make order in these data streams, uh, to uh, support uh, analysis processes uh, and to find uh, information in this data and to build new knowledge. Okay, thank you very much. Taco, as a person representing IODE, would you comment on the AI role in the, in the chain? Yes, there, there, there is an, another aspect. Um, I fully agree with what, this, what Pavel and uh, Martin just said, um, but there is also another aspect to it, and that is that we also need uh, uh, data in, in, a, in, a, in applications, uh, sometimes critical applications which need the data really fast in, in real time or near real time uh, way. Um, uh, think about uh, all kinds of risk management and uh, uh, high water situations, flooding on the coast, uh, also in the light of the of climate change. Um, and for these applications, um, you need, um, uh, you need uh, a lot of data uh, and you need the data very fast and um, then build systems which can take decisions based on these uh, real-time data. Uh, that's another aspect of where artificial intelligence comes in and where we need that. Okay, thank you very much. Marta, any, any comments on the AI role in your daily activities, perhaps? Um, I think that this is, uh, as it was mentioned, that it is growing and we should, you know, be aware of it. Uh, I think it's also a big chance uh, for the end users to have the, you know, uh, ready products, let's say, and to get the data, um, like, tailor-made and easier accessible. So, so there is a huge, huge uh, chance. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Paulina, we are ready with question number four now, the final question of, of today. And this is exactly what I promised to you, that we will talk about the, the communication aspects, how to communicate with the end users about their data product needs. Marta, as a, as a representative of the end users today, would you please start with this question? So I think we touched on this uh, problem already mm -hmm. that, the, mm -hmm. um, that the communication is probably not at the level we all wished that it is. But what and is the, the origin of the problem? I mean... Um, on the one hand, I, I, I think that there is um, still quite low level of innovativeness of... Um, uh, of uh, public sector, and I think it's uh, sad uh, to be uh, sad here, mm. but uh, but it's true, and um, and um, we should work on this uh, strive and the motivation to be more innovative. So, like, try to uh, get out of the box and our normal standard procedure while. Um, uh, formulating uh, policy recommendations, participating in discussions and so on, and really form the strong partnerships that could work on a regular basis with scientific institutions, but also companies uh, to have the um, like cluster cooperation. Because we, we talk really a lot about clusters and how important they are to generate innovation. 
but in practice it's very difficult to to reach and um, and it's also very uh, very difficult to to um, to make it work on a regular basis, not from project to project or um, from one problem to another. So, so usually what I think is that we have a problem we um, to deal with. We then uh, seek help in the research institution, for example. Then we get the, the product, we promote the product or, or we, um, um you know or we we use it for mm. for formulation of certain mm. policy for example and it's done and then there is a next problem so maybe we we uh, we then approach a different institution or the same institution but there is not really a, a regular exchange and regular communication okay uh, so so this is i think one of the problem and uh, and this probably with the you know building trust and this is also a key in this communication. But sometimes we have the, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's moving into the right direction also with the open data and uh, uh, accessible to, to data which are available for free and they are open. Uh, because maybe this also uh, changes a little bit the situation with, with trust and accessibility and and the um, communication can be then easier. So um, so um, I guess this uh, this uh, building trust, this um, uh, changing a little the mindset, more open open and uh, from from the other side from the research institution. I think it's also you know uh, to to come to to this possible end user with the offer let's say because sometimes it's a lack of time that we don't uh, that we have that we don't have the knowledge or these are this um, certain steps that we used to follow in our daily work so we are used to some kind of procedures and uh, if there is also initiative on the other side, so we, we are approached with certain um, possible of having a training on, on available uh, data or how to use from, with the database of promotion of the work of the scientific institution, their databases. Uh, so this would also maybe ease the, the process of communication and getting to know. Okay, thank you very much. Marcin, what's wrong with us? scientific institutions and non-cooperation were mentioned on a number of uh, cases where, where, when Marta was speaking about that. So well, where, where's the gap? Uh, where's the gap? Uh, the mission, one of the, one of the uh, part of the, of the mission of, of science, of science uh, in general, uh, because uh, scientific research are, are uh, uh, able to conduct uh, because of taxpayers and resources taxpayers provide for scientific research. Uh, so one of the mission is to give answers to questions. Uh, it's very, sometimes it's very hard to, to, to raise the right question. Uh, and uh, due to this, uh, science should... Uh, contribute to uh, build knowledgeable society, just to, to, to enable people with knowledge and uh, ask uh, the right questions from people and answer these questions. Okay, thank you very much. Taco, would you add something to, to this conversation? Yes, definitely. Um, uh, there is nothing wrong with science in this respect. Which, um, and referring to what Marta uh, just said, um, there's one good news. The good news is that you asked for open data and open science, and there is indeed a tendency in science all across the globe to, 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 to work towards open science, that is open data, open access to publication, so open access to the, to the um, free and open access to the, uh, to the information and the knowledge uh, in those papers. Um, so that's the good news. The not necessarily bad news, but the situation is, and, and Marta already pointed that out, and, and in a way Martin also said so, um, that we are still kind of working in, in our own silos. And what is lacking 
is, and uh, it has already been said, is the communication is in effect a, a kind of interface layer between the 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 knowledge, the um, expertise, and the um, data available in one of the silos, silos, and the need for that information, that knowledge, that data in another silo. Um, and I don't have a solution right now, um, or a very expensive one, and that is to add a whole layer of people, experts in communication, experts in, uh, in interfacing these two worlds. Um, but that will not happen in, in, in the near future. Um, but we should all concentrate on, on um, or should be aware of these, uh, the, the reasons behind those silos. And there are good reasons for the silos to, to, to exist or, or why, why they were formed. Um, and to, to um, uh, actively interface with each other and uh, start the communication. So the, word, the, the key word is communicate, communicate, communicate. Thank you very much, uh, Pavel. Some last comments on, on this? Okay. Uh, few, so, okay, a few things from my side. Uh, first of all, I think to, like I said, the communication is the key here and we need to, we need to know and we need to be where our audience is. So it means that if you right now, um, if we understand who is on the other side, we should use the proper um, tools and the proper media to, to attract the, the other side. So I mean, if we're talking about the climate change, we should also invest in the education into the younger generation, to our, our, even our children, so imagine how it's how it's challenging for the science scientists to speak with the with the common language from with the other side in a digital space like we are doing right now. So definitely we should know to whom speak, and this language should be fully understandable and encourageable to to get more information uh, from from the scientific scientific world. Uh, well, also, when I, I started with the sentence 175 uh, zettabyte of the data, so even for most people, this number is, is nothing because nobody understands how big it is. So we should also use many times the parallels or the parables to, to uh, explain uh, what the, what's behind the number. So even right now, the zettabyte is a trillion of the gigabyte. And even we should use that, that helps. <laughs> yeah, that helps. And it, 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 give me a sec. But if we are able to store 175 zettabytes onto the Blu-ray disc, then you would like to have a Blu-ray Blu stack 23 times from the Earth to the Moon. And then you start you starting to thinking, okay, I can imagine this number. Even I, if I don't know how far is to the Moon, I can imagine that it's really, really quite a huge number. Even better, you could download 175 zettabytes on today's largest hard drive. It would take 12.5 billion drives. Uh, so what I mean is that we should also try to play with the data, play with the numbers, and speak with the language that will encourage others to, to think about it. And this is a part of the knowledge. This is a part how the scientific world should transfer this information into the public through the proper channels like social media. Um, uh, that we are not, you know, in daily basis are right now. Um, right now it's a huge, ch huge change because of the COVID. So I'm, 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 you know, believing that more and more communication from the sciences will go through these channels. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, we, we came to the end. Uh, I think, you know, my, my one sentence summary of this meeting would be that communication is the key. And I hope this panel is, is uh, an example that we all understand that's this, this fact, because we represent various fields, uh, various parts of expertise, but we all want to talk and share information. So, so I hope that European Maritime Days is a good forum
for this kind of uh, breakthrough ideas and and maybe maybe this will be an example that we all have to talk to each other marta marta talked about it that you know we she, she lacks this kind of communication with scientific institutions and we all agree that this is far from from the the good ones so so maybe this is a, a, a small puzzle into this new new type of communication world uh, between all of us um, uh, could somebody, would somebody like from, from the audience to, uh, would somebody like to ask questions to our panelists, comment on something? I didn't see any comments in the chat, but maybe we can open the floor for live comments. This recording will be available, uh, so please, please uh, contact us or oh, there is a, uh, some commentary from Paulina. Please ask comments if needed. Okay. Yes, uh, you can comment on, on this, on this um, uh, webinar. You can ask questions. Please contact us directly later on. Uh, the recording will be available soon, and uh, I suppose we can finish now. Thank you very much, Marta. Thank you, Marcin, Taco, Thank you. and Pavel. Thank you, Paulina, Patricia, and all the others who are involved in, in preparing it. And have a good afternoon. And thank Let's you very continue much. our uh, discussions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please observe the IOPAN and Storeware Facebook and the YouTube pages for the recording. Okay. Yes. And let's hope this is not the last, last time we, we talk and discuss. And let's hope this will progress with our uh, cooperation, at least locally with Marta. We are from Tri-Cities. So... Okay, so thank you for joining us today and thank you very much and have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.